everyone and thank you for tuning in to this SUP Order video. Now, if you don't know, Robbie Nash's new film, The Longest Wave, is premiering tomorrow, Tuesday the 10th of August in the UK, Australia, and also in Canada. So if you are in those countries, make sure you go and check that out. Now, ahead of this release date, we actually sat down with Robbie Nash and had a little bit of a chat with him about the movie, about how his experiences were during the filming process, and also what we might expect equipment wise coming out from Nash in the future. So make sure you stick around and I really hope you enjoyed this short little chat with Robbie Nash. Um, firstly, just Robbie, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us. I know you've probably been really busy this week speaking to a lot of people. But no, it's, it's all good, man. It's good, good yeah. to see you, good to talk to you. It's just so exciting that you've got this film coming out, The Longest Wave. Uh, we're really excited to see it. I haven't watched the full version yet. Obviously, it premieres next week uh, and we'll watch the trailer. It seems like it's going to be an incredible film. And you really come across as that you really open up in the film. And I think that's one of the main differences from other water sport films. Was it hard for you to fully open up during that process? I know that they dive into you being an athlete, a family man, um, and then obviously your quest to, to continue on with with pushing yourself to the next level. Was that, was that hard to, to find that balance of opening up, but also striving for something? Yeah, you know, it was, it was interesting. When we started out doing the film, you know, I had put, put it off for years and years and years. People have been asking for a long time, hey, let's make a movie, let's make a movie. And I was like, nah, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna make a movie. I'm too busy, I'm, I'm looking forward. I don't really wanna look back. And eventually I got old enough that it was like, okay, we, we should probably, do something. We kind of eased into it and said, if, if we're going to do something, I just really like it to be something unexpected, not just action porn, not just look, aren't I great filming me with a helicopter, filming a helicopter, filming me, you know, that kind of thing, where it's just, I don't know, there's enough of that around, especially in this social media world where it's the next 17 seconds of fame after one after another you know just just bombarded with awesome action and of course we wanted to get some good action but was hoping we could we could do something more than that and joe berlinger the director you know when when he took on the project and i met him it was like well here's a guy that could definitely make something unexpected because he had no idea who i was in the beginning he never made a sports documentary when I watched all the films that he had made, they're just really heavy, like crime and like really intricately woven stories and a lot of depth. And so, well, shit, if, if he wants to do it, it's, it's gonna be different for sure. And that's kind of what, what happened during the film. I mean, it wasn't supposed to take four and a half years to make, it was gonna be like a six month project. Um, and I never even saw the film until it was done. You know, he's a, you know, a high level director. It's not like I was in the editing room going, oh, use this shot, oh, use this music. It, it wasn't like an action video like you'd expect from our industry. This was a, a Joe Berlinger movie and it, it was 100% his creatively. And, uh, you know, you had a lot, of, a lot to work with. You know, I had good action film guys with Donny, Johnny Cesaris, poor boys guys. So really good action. Um, but his crew did all the behind the scenes and all the interviews and all the weaving of the story. And um, it's definitely not what one would expect. You know, you, you go and watch and you think you're going to see a lot of windsurfing and a lot of action and just porn, porn, porn of, of action videos. It's not really what it is. But I think most people walk away with it uh, from it, you know, kind of kind of stoked with the result, which is cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Did you find it personally hard to follow his creative direction you know it, it wasn't the, the process it wasn't it, it wasn't like filming uh you know, mtv cribs or uh, a reality thing where there's guys falling around 24 hours a day you know we were we were shooting to do specific things going on trips looking for surf shooting this shooting that doing interviews but it wasn't invasive mm -hmm. uh it wasn't prying you know, the way he creates the film is through a lot of different talking heads, you know, interviews with different people and weaving the story based on, you know, what he's gathering from, from all these various people over the, the decades of, of looking back and looking forward. So for me, it wasn't, um, it wasn't difficult through the process other than what I was going through personally at the time. Uh, 
you know, when you have the pressure of trying to, to make something that you want to be good from an action standpoint, and you're maybe not getting the conditions, and you're like, God, we flew all this way, and we're not getting it. Usually, you don't really care. You're going to go have fun if the waves are waist high and on shore, or if they're perfect, you know, like at least we're in the water. Uh, but this was different because there's 15 guys on the crew. There's the, you know, the action crew and the documentary crew and just a lot of wheels in motion. So there was pressure there. And then getting injured, having the first major injury, injury in my life. And then, you know, we weren't even sure I was going to be able to, you know, go again. And then we'd restart, you know, nearly a year later, get going. I injured myself again. <laughs> it's like, you know, so, and there were other things going on personally in my life at the time and that, that all gets into the film and people were like wow it's really like personal and heavy and say like, well it's it's real that's how it was i think that's what people are going to relate most to that the film is real and that it shows you at your your most vulnerable and that people are going to really connect with that um moving forward and i think that's a really great touch to the film as well very different to to just that full action like you were saying um if you had the time over to maybe do the film again would you try the longest wave on a foil? Well, I mean, if, foiling's kind of cheating because you can go forever. <laughs> it's a really different animal. And that's the thing is there, there's so much out there in board riding. And, and what you find as you watch the film is in the beginning, it was kind of a thread, you know, something that we had to, to bring you through the film. Who is this guy? Why are we watching him? Where are we going? Uh, it's not like it was something that I was dying to do. It was just, all right, we're going to make a movie. How are we going to? Put it together all right let's look for the longest way which sport are we going to use we use kiting windsurfing well stand-up is really mass market uh, uh viable everybody can understand let's use stand-up and we can bring in the other sports through that narrative and by the end of the film the longest wave was less a target to quantify something really than it became just kind of a a metaphor for my life, for the making of the movie itself, for, you know, the journey that we had gone through. And we didn't even measure anything. Like, we weren't GPSing the waves anymore. We weren't timing anything, and, uh, which is kind of cool because that's what these sports are about in the first place. You, you try to put them in a box, and that's not re really what they're meant for anyway. And that's kind of kind of how we end up at the end of the film, which is cool. Yeah, no, that's, that's a very well-said answer, I think. Just you're going out to do what you love to do and pretty much what everyone else that surfs or has anything to do with the water wants to do as well as just explore it uh, for themselves and have those, those new experiences. Um, is there anything now that you're pushing toward uh, in your life, in your career? Um, just trying to, trying to ride and stay, stay uninjured and, uh, you know, keep pushing forward. I don't really have, any goals at the moment and so my goal is to live comfortably as an athlete without a goal <laughs> you know and see where that where that takes me you know i'm not sitting around eating cheetos and watching tv and getting fat i'm i'm back you know in 100 percent shape you know at least as 100 percent as a 58 year old that um you know has a, a business and other things going on. I'm still on the water every day. I'm doing a lot of wing foiling. I'm still doing stand up. I mean, a lot of guys don't even do stand up anymore. I'm still out there on my freaking Nalu on the South Shore. And, you know, I, I still carry that paddle proudly. It's kind of gone out of trend for a lot of guys. And they're, oh, they just prone surf now. To me, it's still all good. You know, I love stand up. I still love kiting, even though it spanked me pretty hard twice and, you know, gave me a couple of injuries and I don't want a third. So I'm, I'm trying to, be cautious kiting, you know, even though windsurfing is not the trendiest sport in the world, I still love windsurfing. So I'm trying to juggle it all and do it with a smile on my face and keep doing it as long as possible and promote the lifestyle that these sports represent and, you know, getting people out in the nature and young and old, you know, chasing, you know, chasing wind and waves and getting off their damn cell phones and computers. So it, it's a good message. You know, I'm not out to save the planet or you know i haven't picked up a, a you know a torch of you know let's let's save the sea turtles or the dolphins or it's just get out there in the nature find something you love it's going to be good for you and um i'll be out there with you it's kind of my selfish quest at the moment is just to keep riding if i can yeah no i don't think that's selfish at all i just think that's what everyone should be doing and just that's how 
these passions start by just getting out there amongst it. Uh, and then obviously it can lead on to, you know, all of those amazing other things that we can bring in from environmental and exactly, you know, yeah. make it what you want, get them in the water at first, make it part of their life, something they actually are engaged with and care about. And then they can go from there. It's not just a, Oh yeah. Save the oceans. It's like, okay. You say that from wherever, get out there and become part of it. You know, and it's, yeah. The world's not coming to a crazy end. You know, people are in such panic. Everyone's so into being hysterical about something. It's like, just go live, live a good life. Be, make it part of your life. Make it important to you. We're all aware. The more awareness we have of our environment, the better off we're going to be in the long run. Yeah. The less you're engaged with your environment, the less it really means. So the more we can get people out in the wind and the waves, on a boat, in the water, on a surfboard, on a boogie board, on a stand-up, whatever it is, you know that consciousness and that awareness is just going to make things better through the fact that people are engaged with it and it becomes real and it becomes part of their lives. So exactly. that's, that's as far as I'm going to, you know, yeah. get people to, to get into something. So yeah, just make it part of their life. It's getting everybody in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you mentioned that you've, you've got your business, obviously Nash uh, here at Supwater. We review a lot of equipment, a lot of Nash equipment comes through. Is there anything exciting that might be coming out from the designs in the future? Uh, I mean, it's all exciting. You know, it, <laughs> to me, some of the most exciting stuff is the stuff that hasn't needed to change for a while. Um, and that's that's often part of the problem with our, not with our industry, but with freaking people in general is they want the next best thing. Oh, what, what's different on it? And I love to be able to say, you know, on that model, nothing is different. That model is going to be the same. We might put a different graphic on it, but it's going to be the same in 10 years because you just can't make it any better. Like that is as good as that kind of thing can get. Um, so I'm kind of stoked with that, that we don't just necessarily change stuff for the sake of change. Like there's brands that will just like take their mold and cut the tail. Okay, it's a new board. And you can tell it's the same mold and they just change the tail or whatever to make it new. Of course, we have a lot of new stuff, you know, like winging, everything's new. Windsurfing, which, you know, again, isn't, isn't super huge for us. We've got unreal windsurfing stuff now. We've got Ricardo Campello out there just killing it. Um, there's no competitions anymore on the world tour, but if there were, he'd be winning right now, which is kind of cool to have somebody at that level back on the brand windsurfing. Casper and stand up is still just on fire. You know, it's, uh, it's cool to still just be part of it all. And it's not always about coming up with the next, you know, thing that's going to turn the world on its head. It's, it's making good gear um, that hopefully lasts and gets people out on the water and puts a smile on their face and gets them healthy. And sometimes it's, it's new and sometimes it's old and, you know, it, hopefully it's always good, but it's, we're not always out to just try and sell more stuff by hyping up something new, you know, sometimes old gear is awesome. You know, take that old board out of your garage. It's 10 years old and you probably have more fun on it than a, a brand new one. And then when you finally wear it out, go get a new one. You, know, it's, you don't need new gear every year. No, that, that's very true. But uh, it's interesting. We've had a few readers write in about, especially with the touring range that they think maybe there could be a few updates with the two oh, yeah. range, like with the handles on the board and maybe a couple of changes there but does that reflect maybe that you're in hawaii uh and focusing more on other shapes or no it's, it's more more economies of scale we we definitely have areas that we should probably make changes but you 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 get into mold costs and amortizations and stuff and you, you don't sell many and you know you should carry it for another year because you haven't even made a dollar on it that kind of thing and that's where the unfortunate business side of business comes into play sometimes uh, where you wish it didn't, you know, that's the only thing about the business that I don't like is the business side of business. I love de designing this stuff. I love making this stuff. I love the graphics. I love the marketing, but sometimes the nuts and bolts and dollars and cents kind of make you go. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's in touring, there's, there's definitely some room for, for improvement, you know, in radical wave boards, there's always going to be new trends. It's more the classic stuff like a Nalu, you know, that kind of thing that, um, yeah, you'll never outgrow it. It's always going to be what it is. The, the extreme things, race boards, wave boards, that, that's always going to you know, evolve and change. And when you, when you think it's done is when something really new comes along for sure. Yeah. 
Oh, that's, that's awesome to hear. So yeah, we're looking forward to seeing, you know, what's next from, from Nash and obviously from yourself as well in a personal level. But um, is there anything else you wanted to add to this conversation at all? No, just no. Stoked, to, stoked to be talking to you. Yeah, and, uh, you as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm still full on into stand up, which is, ah. which is good. You know, it's, it's funny how things come and go and trends come. And go. Like I know in Europe, it's huge, but it's huge at a mass market level now with inflatables yeah. and, you know, the, That's right. the lake is full of people and, and less so on the engaged athletic sporting side. And uh, I find that a little bit of a shame, you know, like here, we used to have 250 guys doing downwinders and now you're, you hardly ever see one. And you go to the South shore where there used to be a lot of guys on stand up and now everybody's on prone or foiling and right. hell it's just as much fun for me now as it was in 2008 or 2010 or 2012 or whatever, you know, it's amazing. I love my stand up. Yeah, of course. So we just hope that that mass markets, at least some of those people get into the competitive side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It'd be great to see you get to the Olympics, for example. Oh yeah, exactly. I think there's a bit of a push as well from a lot of people. I know with Casper yeah. as well, being with the ISA and, yeah, that, that's going to help now that the, the, the sporting authority has kind of finally solidified itself. You know, it wasn't healthy to have different people running around with, yeah. you know, different tours and whatnot. Now it's getting a little bit more of a uniform push. And I think that helps. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, thanks so much for your time, Robbie. Yeah, right on, Bob. So firstly, huge thank you to Robbie Nash for his time to sit down with us and chat about the movie The Longest Wave, which premieres tomorrow. Remember, Australia, UK, Canada premiering tomorrow i'll drop some links down below so you're able to check out that full video when it does hit the streaming channels just want to thank you all very much for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you on another subwater video very soon